Do I have hobbies? This is my hobby. Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about Belbin's team roles and do the quiz and see which ones I am. And I'll link above to my description of all the different roles in Belbin's team roles. I'm going to click record on my screen. Click. And here we are. So, this seemed to be the best website I could find for the team roles inventory test. It is unofficial, but you have to pay for the official ones, and I was like... Mm. Question one. I usually have strong influence on decision making in groups. Basically, I go either way on this one. Sometimes I'm like, I know what's right, let's do it. And sometimes I just hide. Generally, I don't involve myself unless I think people are really going to mess up. But then... Maybe that means I pick my influence, and then I am influential when I actually talk. I'm going to mildly agree. I challenge weak ideas in a logical and analytical manner that looks past the human element. Yeah, I'm a bit too logical sometimes. I spread enthusiasm for new ways of doing things as a way of getting it yes. I feel work must be accurate and reliable, even down to the tiniest detail. Now, I do agree with that, but also, like, if it gets done, it gets done. I'm actually quite low on this one. I'm going to say, I like other people to be good at things, but I'm rubbish. <laughs> I definitely miss, I don't miss details, I just, if it's my own work, I get bored with the detail. I'm going to go with a low one. Not all the way, but most of the way. I do not like to throw myself at projects where the goals are unclear. Oh god, I love that. No, I love that, so that means double, double negative. Yeah. Now, my technical knowledge and expertise are usually my greatest strengths. So, as a project manager, I don't know that much technically about the project I'm doing, but as a project manager, if you think of project management as a technical skill, I know quite a lot. Is that my strength though? It's like one of my minor strengths. It's not my biggest strength. So I'm going to go with a little bit yes. 7 of 45. Oh, this goes on. 7 of 45. If I know someone better, I make use of context outside of my group to try and make things done better. That's badly worded. I'm going to go with a big agree. Basically, they're looking for the, is it the resource evaluator. And yeah, I think I'm one of them. I stick to the plan once the team has reached a decision. Yes. Yes, I agree if there's been a sort of communal agreement to do a thing, that you should just do the thing. And even if you disagree, you should still do it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go, but also sometimes if it's wrong, I will challenge it. Okay, I'm going low. I find it natural to take charge where a team is at a standstill. <sighs> yeah, I really quite like it when you're in a project and it's really confusing as to what to do next. Quite often though, I will go out and just ask loads of people what to do next. I won't initiate it myself if I don't know how to do it, but I'll definitely push along and try and get stuff to happen. So yeah, not all the way, but yeah. I bring a touch of perfectionism to every job I do. No, 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 no. I seek new ways of doing things to stimulate my, yes. I love doing new things. I love finding new ways to do things and I like doing those new things in a new way to make sure my brain's stimulated because otherwise I get bored and spend a lot of time napping. I tend to get caught up in novel ideas that occur to me even at the expense of another, yes, gorgeous. I uh, decided to start going to two videos a week on this channel during the week of a multi-million pound beard at work and I actually managed to record like three videos that week even though I had a bit to get in. I try to maintain a sense of professionalism at all times. It depends what you define as professionalism. I think my style of professionalism is less professional than some other people's style of professionalism. But yes, I try and stay professional at all times. I try and keep unnecessary emotions out of work. Um, I think I'm a almost all the way yes on this one. I see my professional life as being a lot of my life. There's very small parts of it where I don't feel like I'm a professional. Oh, that's sad. Do I have hobbies? This is my hobby. Right, on with it. 14, I get on well with all types of people. I'm gonna go with like most, not all, definitely not all, but who does? 
15, I am somewhat logically minded and remote, and not always enthusiastic as the other members of my team. So, I'm very logically minded, hi, and not always as enthusiastic as other members of my team. God no, I'm definitely, usually, the most enthusiastic person on the team. So, I don't know where to go on this one. Um, I'm definitely not remote, I don't think. I'm gonna go with a low, a little low. I'm always keeping up with the latest trends and developments. Yeah, gotcha. I try to. It's really hard. It's really hard. My carefulness and attention to detail prevents careless mistakes and omissions. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Right at the bottom. I tend to back down when someone forcibly opposes my suggestion. No. When someone tries to force suggestions on me, I'm like, dude, is there a reason for this? Do you need help? Are you okay? 19. I prefer to be one of the teammates calling the shots. Now this is interesting. As a project manager, you'd assume that I'd be like, well, let's be bossy. As a woman, you're always bossy. But the answer is no. I like it when other people tell, tell me what to do. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to be critical thinking. I'm happy to think outside the box, to think about how things need to be done, but actually what to do, I prefer to just be told what to do. I have a quiet interest in getting to know my teammates better. Quiet? What if I've got a loud interest? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna agree. I can be guaranteed to come up with something original. Yeah, sometimes. I tend to familiarise myself in depth with the proper ways of handling the tasks in hand. Yes, don't always follow it, but I generally know what I should be doing. Hey! Halfway. I desire that work is properly done and I'm not satisfied with good enough. Oh no, I think good enough is always the best. Usually, like, why do better than you need to? Like, if someone asks for a mini, why make them a Rolls Royce? Nah, good enough. I can be relied upon to make sure that all essential work is organised. Yes, essential work will be organised. Non-essential work will be just... 25. I quickly see opportunities and take advantage of them. Yeah, I'm on that. One of my key strengths is matching competent people with the correct tasks. This is something I haven't had much practice of. I'm gonna go in the middle. I literally don't know. I usually know whether an idea will work or whether it won't. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I have, I have a sixth sense. I used to think at, when I was like 18 and everyone was applying for uni, I had like a sixth sense of which people were gonna get into their first universities. And I had a 100% success rate on guessing if people would get into Oxbridge. Uh, which was quite depressing when there was someone really excited about going to Oxbridge and I was like, nah, don't even apply mate, don't even apply. I didn't say this to her face, I will say. Moving on, 28. I think a lot about who should do what on a team. Yes. I'm always thinking about team dynamics, who's doing what, how they're doing it, whether they're enjoying themselves, but also whether they're the right person for the project. You wanna make sure people have stretch assignments, that they're doing work which will help them grow. You don't wanna just give work to somebody who's done it 100 times before. All that stuff, I'm, I'm always thinking about that sort of thing. 29, I trust logical analysis more than intuition or the human element. <sighs> I think my gut always goes logical, but then I realise that actually intuition quite often has more in there but it's usually based on logic. I'm gonna go logic. I'm gonna go logic, not all the way, but most of the way. I easily recognise talents and take stock of people and what they can contribute to a team. I spend, again, this is something I think quite a lot about. Um, I think I'm relatively good at it. I don't know, I'm gonna go with a high yes. I press for action to make sure that the team does not waste time. So I want to do this, but I think this is part of my leadership arsenal that I'm less good at and less practiced at, so I'm going to go a small yes. I'm often the one who gets the team to agree on a necessary course of action. I logic people out of things and into things. Um, I'm reasonably good at this. I'm reasonably good at seeing both sides of an argument and sort of sitting in the middle and going, right, here's both your sides. Come on, this is kind of a good middle ground. So yeah, reasonably good. Not all the way good, but reasonably good. I enjoy analysis for its own sake and I find less joy in planning and implementation. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I quite enjoy analysing things. <laughs> I'm good at generating results in accordance with pre-made plans. Um, I'm gonna go with a little bit of a no. 
Like, I get the end result, but it's not always taking the route that I planned. I am not satisfied unless I can give my job my full attention. I'd kind of say I'm the other way around. I'm the sort of person who likes doing lots of things at once. I like giving full attention to one thing at a time, but like for a couple of hours and then I want to do something else. One of my key strengths is building and maintaining a good working relationship. Yeah, I'm going to go with a decent, nah, decent, yeah. I insist that we do things professionally and by the book. <laughs> I believe in pro professionalism, as we've already spoken about, but I also think you need to understand the processes. It's something I find really hard when I start in a new company, when you don't really understand the processes, so you don't really understand which bits you can wiggle with a little bit, because you need to know what outputs are needed and make sure you're not missing them. And that's why the process is there. But if you understand the process and understand exactly how it works, then you can cut corners and adapt it to your particular project while still giving the outcomes which the company needs, whether that's financial data or whatever. I sometimes find more time fine-tuning definitions, concepts or techniques than necessarily prudent. I tend to avoid the obvious and seek out the unexpected. Yeah, I think that's me. I think that's definitely me. Five more left to go. So, I am reluctant to contribute unless the matter at hand is one I know in depth. Oh, no. I'm up for anything I am. I'll jump in there, have a go, try and work out, learn things really fast. Nah, not me. I'm happy when there are no set plans for what we're about to do. Yes. I openly challenge the views of others so we can get to the best solution. Yes, that's my favourite part of any job. I love it when you're in a situation and someone says, Hi Sorrel, this is definitely the best way to do it. No, there must be a better way. Should we think of a better way? No, 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 no. Definitely the best way. You should do it my way. Really? Let's ask around. And then you ask around and find that actually the way they've been doing it forever is not necessarily the best way and it could be adapted better for this specific situation. <sighs> when a task doesn't come easily to me, I find it easy to delegate it to others. Yes, definitely, I love delegating. Although it's always really hard because it never gets done quite how you expect. But that's the thing, is when it's something you're not very good at, it's brilliant because they're usually better than you. Producing a flurry of ideas is one of my biggest strengths. Yes, I can think of a lot of ideas I have whole notebooks full of things to do. <laughs> Ooh, last question. <laughs> I openly show my impatience when others get in the way of progress. Now this is something, if you'd asked me a couple of years ago, well, I would have said no. Other people would have said yes, but I'm hoping now, actually, this is something I've got better at dealing with. Um, I definitely do get impatient, but I got much more chill about it and I know I've just got to wait. So a little yes still. I think it's still something I need to work on. And here are my results. Oh wow, so 95% plant, 90% resource investigator, 87% coordinator. That's quite good for a project manager. I'm also mm, a bit of a monitor evaluator, a bit of a specialist, 53% team worker, oh, 77% shaper, and only 10% completer finisher, which I know. Oh, and decent level of implement. Generally, I've got quite high scores on lots of things, but I'm not surprised by resource investigator or plant. I'm a little bit surprised by coordinator. I wasn't expecting that one. And shaper? Eh, I see myself as a shaper. Ah, oh, it's got an extra bit down here. So we've got the team, uh, the thinking orientated roles, which I've got quite high. That's the purple ones, which I'm quite high in. Then the green ones are people orientated roles and again I'm high in two of those. It's it's the action oriented roles where I'm a bit lower. Um, which yeah makes sense. I do get a lot done though but that's more just I don't know. I think what I'm quite surprised at is I never thought I was much of a people person and to have quite high scores in the people ones but then I do think a lot about people. Hmm, I'm going to have to muse on this. Anyway, why don't you take the test? Let's see if you've got similar scores to mine. I'll link below to the test. and I'd love to see if you've got similar or completely different scores to me. Um, thanks for watching and goodbye. <laughs>